I know I've been flying a lot of approaches lately, so I promise this is the last one, or the last two, you'll see in a minute, for a while. And this is uh, the Arabesque E1000 that we're going to be flying. And we're going to make a route from Providence, Rhode Island up to Boston. And we're going to be flying on one side of the screen an ILS approach. And I'm noting quickly my frequencies, my initial approach fix, Goshi, my altitude at final approach fix, and finally my minimums. So we need to plug that into our Garmin 1000 or X1000. So select our approach and ILS 04 right. And Goshi will be our transition or our initial approach fix. We'll go ahead and we'll activate that. And next we're going to set the altitude of 6,000 feet, which is really non-negotiable. The chart shows a line above and below 6,000, so we need to cross it then. Um, and then the next one is going to be an RNAV approach or on the right, or, uh, yeah, right side of the aircraft, and that is an LPV. And uh, I'm looking at the chart here and noting again, initial approach fix, Goshi, my altitude, and my minimums. So let's put that into the second airplane, as it were. And I'm selecting the RNAV that says LPV. And then our transition, Goshi. And finally, we'll activate that. And then set our altitude, 6,000 feet. And next, we're just going to jump right into the airplane. So note that we have uh, two different flights going on here, ILS and LPV, and we're just about ready to cross over Goshi in both flights, and you'll see a bit of a juggle as the airplane adjusts to the new flight path. Now both descents are going to begin using LNAV. So you'll see on the descent indicator a little magenta arrow. And that is kind of our guide. So on the ILS side of things, you can see that we have begun our descent. On the LPV side, we are waiting for that arrow to reach the center point before we begin our descent. And it has just reached that point. So we are beginning to descend down to 4,000 feet, which you can see has been dialed in just to the upper right of that tape. And you can see on the ILS side, I have not flipped over to the locator yet, or I'm sorry, the localizer using the frequency dialed in on the VOR, but I'm gonna try that now and you can see that it has turned green now says uh, localizer the needle is centered so we have captured it but as far as the descent goes we still have LNAV in force on the right side the LPV we have reached 4,000 feet and we're going to plateau there until we reach a point where the aircraft needs to descend down to the next level, which is 3,000 feet. While on the left side of the aircraft, we continue our descent very gradually. Now, if you look at the top of, the, of both of the uh, PFDs, we are using VPATH. The guide slope is white on the left side and that's because we have not captured the guide slope yet and on the LPV side the right side we have begun descending down to 3,000 feet so what's going to happen on the left side or the ILS side is we're going to descend down to 1700 feet which is the final approach fix altitude and we'll level off there until we meet up with the guide slope and begin our final descent down to the runway. 
Now, on the LPV side, notice we've lost the arrow and we now have a magenta diamond. So this means that we've gone from VNAV to LPV. And this is the more precise approach. And you can see that down in the compass. It says GPS on one side of the needle and LPV on the other. And we are beginning our descent on that side. And on the left side, we're coming up on uh, 1700, and we'll level off there until we intercept the guide slope. Now you'll notice on the right side, and I know this might be confusing, and maybe I'm trying to do too much here, but the glide path, or the GP, is uh, green. So we have captured that which is why we have that little diamond. Now, on the left side, you can see the diamond beginning to descend alongside that altitude tape. I just find it interesting that ILS approaches give you green. So we've got green for a needle, and we've got a green for the diamond. And on the other side, we've got magenta. So we've just intercepted the guide slope on the ILS side, and we're making our final descent. So we're about even in terms of our altitude. I think I've got a notch of flaps. I can't remember exactly what I did at that point. Another notch of flaps on the LPV side. So that nose rises and falls. One thousand. So on the right side, we're playing a little catch up with the glide path because we're above it now because of those flaps. On the ILS side, that green diamond is right on the mark. Our localizer needle is centered. Everything looks just right. And on the right side, everything is where it should be. 500. That ILS dip was flaps. I think final notch of flaps. 400. So the minimums on for both of these is 213 feet. 300. So I have disengaged the autopilot. I've got 200. the airplane. can't land two airplanes at once. 100. Minimum. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. I really like the Aerobusk. It's a really steady aircraft. Lands very easily. So I hope I didn't make you seasick by attempting to do two different approaches at the same time, but I've talked a lot about, uh, in the last couple of videos, about RNAV approaches, and I just wanted to make a comparison with the old-fashioned ILS approach and to see how they generally work identically. Um, in both instances. But we're going to see a lot more RNAV approaches. We're going to, uh, because they give such versatility, they don't require all the extra uh, ground equipment. So I challenge you 
to jump in your airplane, dial up an RNAV approach, and try it yourself. I think it will be great to add something else.